greetings and welcome back to another episode of Man Cave Meals. Today uh, we are going to have a look at the anatomy of an ugly drum smoker. Some of you may have heard about these, but this is a homemade smoker. It's made out of a 55 gallon drum and it's got a lot of cooking capacity and it cooks very well. Last time on our last episode we uh, did some cooks with the Weber Smoky Mountain 18 and a half inch bullet smoker and what this is in, in comparison to that is just really a lot larger version of the uh, same type of smoker. Now my my Weber Smoky Mountains an 18 and a half inch. They also make our Weber also makes a 22 and a half inch version of the same smoker, which in reality is very close to what we have built here. The the drum is the main part of this. It's a standard 55 gallon drum. You can find these if you look around. Uh, Craigslist is a good place to start looking for them, and you can get these cheap. I got this one for about $12. Uh, I think I paid 12 bucks for it. Uh, but it's, uh, like I said, it's just a standard 55 gallon drum that we, that we started with. And this guy, I built the charcoal basket for it. If you remember on our Weber Smoky Mountain, we had a charcoal pan built into the bottom. But I've built this charcoal basket out of some nuts and bolts for legs. And I used a Weber uh, 22 and a half inch replacement charcoal grade as the base. And then I just took some expanded metal and worked, worked around it to make the basket. There are a lot of different ways you can make a basket. Uh, instead of going this route, you can use something like a, uh, a deep fryer basket out of a deep fryer rig that's got a lot of holes in it. Or you can take a, a large stock pot and drill holes in it. It's just important that you have a lot of air access to the charcoal when you build this basket. Uh, the charcoal's got to have air from underneath and it's got to have a way for ash to fall out. So this basket works really well for that. I also made myself a chain handle for it so I can raise and lower the basket into the drum very easily. It will just sit it if we were cooking today, we would load this up with charcoal and put some lit charcoal on top, just like we did with the Weber Smoky Mountain, and then set it right down into the base of our drum. Uh, in my build here, I've set my drum up to hold three racks. The lowest rack, we just put an old charcoal grate down in here. It sits right in place. I've got three bolts. These are, uh, I think, inch and a half bolts at three different places around here to hold the rack into position. This lowest rack in my drum is for the diffuser. And I just use a pizza pan in there and set the pan in just like that. And that acts as a diffuser so I'm not cooking my meat over direct heat. Now I've got this uh, drum set up for two different cooking racks which I just use the Weber 20 the standard Weber replacement 22 and a half inch cooking racks and once again there's three bolts in there that hold this in place. The reason I use three rather than four is uh, if you've got four in there, they've got to be perfectly level with each other or the rack won't sit flat. If you've just got three, it'll sit flat no matter what. So that's my lower cooking rack. Then we've got an upper cooking rack. So we can have up to two racks of food going. This thing will hold a really whole lot of meat with uh, with that much rack space. It holds this, it'll hold the same amount as the big 22 and a half inch Weber Smoky Mountain. That's a that's a $400 grill or $400 smoker. And I have also 
uh, modified my drum a little bit with a ring of aluminum where I can sit the Weber dome lid right on top. And that's how this thing goes together and how it sets up initially. I put a, a good quality barbecue grade thermometer on here with a three inch dial. This particular thermometer has a calibration screw on it where I can set it up to read correctly. Uh, the, the stem on the inside is only two or two and a half inches long and it's kind of important to have to know what your temperature is inside of here at the middle. So when I set this up initially I did some test burns and calibrated the thermometer where it reads correctly. And as with any other smoker or grill that we've talked about before, you've got to have air, you've got to allow air in, into the cooker to keep the fire burning and you want to be able to control that air so you can control your temperature. On my drum here, I've got three air intakes. The first one is just the plug in the back with a cap. It's a pipe nipple. It's a three quarter inch pipe nipple. I drilled a one inch hole to put that in place and I've got a metal cap for it. And typically when I'm cooking, that one stays fully open uh, all the time. And for adjustments, I've got two more three quarter inch intakes and I've put riser pipes on here just for ease of use and a brass ball valve where I can adjust I can adjust the amount of air coming into the cooker with with the ball valve and I've got two of those so it gives me a, a really a fine level of air control being able to make those adjustments like that I've also just like on the Weber Smoky Mountain I've installed a uh, sensor grommet where I can run temperature probes inside this cooker without having to uh, run them under the lid and uh, basically that takes care of this I've got another little device down here that we'll talk about in a future cook that's a, a connector for my automatic temperature controller and we'll talk about that a little bit further down the road but in a nutshell that's uh, what is involved in an ugly drum smoker you can build these things really cheaply or you can build them really expensively I've spent a little more on mine than than some people spend but I've also spent less than others but uh, with a little ingenuity uh, and a little effort you can put this smoker together for a hundred dollars or less if you get uh, get the materials you need cheap uh, you may even have some of this stuff you need laying around but this my friends is a beast when it comes to cooking some low and slow barbecue and it will cook a lot of it so in our next episode we're probably going to cook a big cut of meat we may even cook two i'm thinking about cooking a couple of big briskets so this uh smoker is fully capable of cooking two brisk two full packer briskets no problem and that's most likely what we're going to do so when you see us again uh we'll be uh prepping some beef so stay tuned